Today, we are exploring the automation of Palo Alto firewall rules. In this lab session, I will demonstrate how to create a basic firewall rule using Ansible. Additionally, we will explore creating rules in comparing both new and existing objects within the firewall configuration. We will go further by creating two rules and placing them within the rule order, one at the top and the other after a specific rule. This task aims to illustrate how to install rules at the selected location. Furthermore, I will guide you through deleting a rule and making amendments to existing rules already configured within the firewall. If you enjoy this type of content, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing. Links to the code on GitHub will be provided in the video description below. I have a Palo Alto firewall on my network operating within EVNG, accessible via HTTPS and SSH from my MacBook. I will be using Python and Ansible with Visual Studio Code as my code editor. Before commencing the lab, ensure your laptop has SSH access to the firewall. Within my folder, I have configured Ansible settings specifying the location of my host file, since my host file isn't in a default Ansible location. It needs to be explicitly defined in the config file or specified during a playbook execution using option "-i". My host file resides in the same folder as my Ansible config file and playbooks. While I've, I have designated only one firewall in my Ansible host file, Multiple devices can be specified, allowing playbook execution across all listed firewalls. The firewall in focus today has the IP address 192.168.0158. I have prepared five playbooks for today's task, so let's begin. Let's look into the first playbook. There are three sections that remain consistent across all playbooks, showcased today. The initial section defines the playbook's name. Invoke Palo host from the host file and specify not to gather any facts with a local connection. The second section imports the Palo Alto network Ansible collection, housing task tailored for Palo Alto firewalls. The final section sets variables for device access, mapping, IP address, username and password. While these credentials are in plain text for lab purpose, it's best practice to employ Ansible Vault for encrypted storage. For a detailed guide on this, check out my previous video linked in the top right corner. Now, let's examine the task itself. Add policy rule. This task involves simple access rule creation, utilizing the previously defined Palo provider variable. It calls upon Palo Alto security rule creation, specifying rule details such as a name, description, rule type, source, destination zones, allowed application, web browsing and SSL, and log settings. Once the playbook is executed, the configuration remains in the candidate configuration until committed to the device. Let's push the Ansible playbook and observe the result on the firewall. Upon inspection, the rule is successfully created under the policy with all the specified variables from Ansible Playbook. See that the config is not committed as this wasn't part of the Ansible Playbook. Moving on to the second playbook, which adds complexity by introducing a new network objects utilized within a new rule, alongside an existing object from the firewall configuration. While the initial section mirrors those of the first playbook, this playbook include, includes two tasks, object creation and rule creation. For detailed instruction on object creation with an Ansible, refer to my previous videos. The rule creation task follows a similar structure to the previous Ansible playbook with additional variables for source and a destination objects. Source IP has a new object I have created in the task above, and in a destination IP, I am a calling object that is already present on the firewall. Upon the playbook execution, the rule and the objects are successfully configured on the firewall. Let's check the firewall for the new policy and object. First, check the object. We should see server underscore one, object created, 
and then I will check a policy and a server one DNS rule that I have just created with, this, with a server underscore one object. All looks great. So I can move to the next lab. The third playbook demonstrates the importance of rule placement within the security rule order. Unlike previous rules appended at the bottom, this playbook includes task to slot two rules at a specific location. The first task create a rule at the top, while the second task place the rule after a specific existing rule, in this case BGP rule. I have created in the task above. Let's execute the playbook and observe the results on the file. I see one new rule is positioned at the top while the second rule is correctly slotted after the BGP rule. The capability is crucial for maintaining rule order during automation task. Other options are slot rule at the bottom or above certain rule. If you want to slot a rule after or before an any existing rule, you need to know the rule name and the specified and Ansible playbook, like here, the BGP rule. Next, we explore rule removal by specifying the rule name and setting the state variable to absent. The rule is removed from the configuration. In our case, I will remove any rule from configuration, the rule I have created in the first Ansible playbook in this video. Let's execute the rule and check if the rule will disappear from firewall configuration. The rule is gone now. This is how simple the rule removal is. Just a name of rule and a variable absent. Lastly, we address the rule amendments, updating an existing security rule. In this example, we modify a rule from the second playbook, expanding its application scope. Care must be taken to preserve existing configuration while introducing new variable. In this case, we add SSL to the existing DNS application. If I would just type SSL, it will override the DNS and not add it to it. So just be aware of it. So you don't accidentally replace security rule variable in with the new one. Additionally, a task to commit the configuration is included to finalize changes. Upon executing the playbook, the rule is updated and the configuration is successfully committed on the firewall. As you know, commit takes some time on Palo Alto firewall. So even here, when it runs via Ansible playbook, so just be patient, please. Thank you for watching. I trust you found this video informative. Should you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments or message me directly.